Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this Houdini tutorial we want to create a packed pattern and project it onto a mesh. So basically a closed mesh like the stalk is our input and we are going to create a pattern like this and pack it on the UVs of the dog and then project it back to the mesh. So let's do this step by step in a new Houdini scene and call it GeoDog or Mesh or whatever you have there. Take the file node and bring in the mesh. And mine is way too large, so I have to scale this down with a transform node and rotate it a little. What's important is that we have a mesh with UV coordinates applied. These are just fine. You can look at this by pressing spacebar 5. And now we want to create a nice giraffe pattern or a tiger pattern or you can scale it to whatever you like. And yeah, maybe we start with 11 by 11 fields. We'll see later. Now in order to make these tiles independent of each other, we set it to the facet node to unique points. And you can quickly check whether they are independent now by turning on a primitive node and scale it a little and you'll see those are split up. Now instead of the primitive node, we will just jitter it. And I don't want to jitter it that extremely. So let's turn it down to 0.05 and restrict it to the X and Z axis so it's totally flat. Next we can resample it to give a bit more detail. You will see we get additional points, especially when we shorten the length. Now another jitter node can make this shape even crazier. This time we should too choose a rather small scale and make sure it remains flat. And if you're happy with this kind of uh, random shapes, we can make them really smooth and round by resampling them once more using subdivision with a very, very short length. Now, again, keep playing with scale values from other nodes so you will get more crazy shapes. Just make sure they don't overlap lap too much, so this is something we should try to avoid. Now let's see what the UV layout node can do for us in terms of packing. When we start it, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell it that our UV attribute is actually the position. And it's a flat projection using the Z and X axis, which are the ones lying on the floor and you can immediately see it turns a overlapping structure into a really ordered one. We can increase the padding between the islands and we should also give it some room to the border so we say apply padding between islands and target boundary. Now at the moment the target boundary is just a rectangle or a square but we can pipe in our dog geometry and uh, as soon as we say pack into islands from second input it will refer to the UV map of our mesh. Now that's quite a time saver and all we need to do is now take care of this getting some more yeah, detail within these surfaces so I like to use the remesh node for this and we can turn the target size of the edges way down. We can experiment with values as low as 0 0.05 so it just adapts to the surface of our dog mesh better. Now how can we project this back? It's mostly about um, sampling the UVs from the second input again.
and this should work by using the function UV sample. So we want our positions to turn into the UVs from the second input. So it's basically the position based on its UVs and we feed in the current position of uh, this two dimensions. So let's do this one by one. That's meaning the second input. So we refer to the dog. It may also help to examine the UV sample documentation a little. Then it wants to know the attribute name so this is the position so we want to know positions on the stock mesh and um, what exactly we use to transfer these are the uvs and um, that's basically what we feed into is our current position. So that's basically two-dimensional information we have here. And it's going to be fed into the UV of the dog mesh. And then we're asking for the position on this mesh. All right, of course we can do similar th things with textures, but you being a Houdini artist pretty much will have a maybe a reason to do this kind of thing once in a while. Thank you for watching.